We are a people who crave instant gratification. When we want something, we want it now. We turn on the hot water, and bingo, we have hot water. Hungry, we pull into the nearest fast food restaurant, and dinner is ready within a few seconds. You want to watch a movie? All you have to do is go to Netflix, and you have the movie right under your television. Nowadays, you don't even have to have cash in your pocket to purchase something you want. Instead, all you have to do is swipe a piece of plastic and bingo, you have money to spend. Modern technology certainly has its conveniences, but it also has its drawbacks. Because we tend to become impatient when we don't get what we want right away. We want what we want, and we want it right now. The problem is, is that we forget to think about things in terms of a longer period of time. We think about now without taking the long view. For a person accustomed to living in the now moment, it's hard to imagine or to plan for something far in the future. At all times, all past history are known to God. In the first reading, God revealed His name as I Am. I Am who am. And of course, from our grammar, we know that I Am is the first person singular in the present tense. So for God, God is now. All times. Past, present, and the future are present to God. Because He is the epitome of existence. He existed before anything in this universe came into being. And He knew all that would come before anything ever took place. So God's sense of time is much different than our sense of time. When you talk to a little child, one that's two or three years old, if you talk about something that happened a year ago, well, that was half a lifetime ago. We have young people here today. If they think about the future, it seems like something way, way, way far away. Hard to imagine what they will do as adults. They have ideas, but they're not sure because it's in the future. But God knows those in store for them. And for those of us who are older, some of us in our 70s, 80s, or even older, for us, a year might seem like a blink of an eye. Time goes by relatively fast. Because we're looking back in terms of a lifetime of 50 or 60 or 70 or more years. And a year as part of that lifetime seems small. But if you think about the cosmos, you realize that God knew what he was going to do before there was anything. He knew that he would create the earth, a tiny, tiny planet. And on this earth, he would create the Garden of Eden, a paradise for creatures he would call human beings. God, in his own mind, before anything ever happened, knew about Adam and Eve. He knew that they would, he would have human beings who would reject him and disobey his requests, his orders, and his commands. He knew that they would eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And he knew before anything began that he would send his son. And that's because to God, all time is present, even before it is. God is, I am. He knew that he would send his son into the human family. And so, after the creation of the earth, after the creation of the Garden of Eden, after the sin of Adam and Eve, God knew that he would send his son, and so he established a relationship with a man named Abraham. 
Abraham was a man so old that everyone else had lost hope of him ever having children. And his wife was old. She was beyond the years of childbearing. And yet when God told Abraham that his descendants would be so numerous that they would be like the stars of the sky and the sands along the seashore, Abraham believed. Abraham never saw the fulfillment of that promise in his own lifetime. But he believed. And it was from Abraham's stock, from his descendants, that the Messiah, the Son of God, would come. And so before God even created the universe, he knew that he would send his Son to redeem the world. And how long was that? How much time was that from before creation until his Son, Jesus, set foot on earth? Scientists tell us that the universe is 13.7 billion years old. 13.7 billion years since the Big Bang and all of creation came into existence, virtually at once. And scientists tell us that the Earth is something like 4.5 billion years old. That's billion with a B. That's like a thousand million. Nine zeros after that four. That's a huge amount of time. And how long has Homo sapiens, human beings, how long have they been on Earth? A mere 200,000 years. So if you look at that time span before anything happened, from the moment of creation until human beings, it's an incredible period of time. An incredible period of time. Billions of years. And 200,000 years since human beings walked here for the first time modern human beings. And so in God's sense of time, it's huge. <coughs> Although all is present to God, He works on a time scale that's immense. We can't even comprehend what 13 billion years is like. It is beyond our imagination. But that's how long it was from the beginning of creation. It's amazing. And it's been 2,000 years since Jesus is walking here. And if you can compare the 2,000 years since Jesus came to us to the 13.7 billion years from the beginning of creation, it's amazing. And yet God had that in his mind's eye as he started creation. And Jesus was there. Jesus was there as co-creator of the universe. Long with the Holy Spirit. God's time is not our time. God works on a cosmic scale, a scale so huge we have difficulty in understanding. And here we are, wanting instant gratification. When we put those coins in the vending machine, we want that candy bar or chips right away. So you look at that and say, hmm, we need to think in a longer time. And that cosmic scale is something that God calls eternity. Eternity. How long is eternity? Eternity is forever. And our little lives, even if we live to be 90 or 100 years old, are still minuscule compared to eternity. And so Lent is a time every year to slow down, to think about God's time, to think about eternity, to put aside that craving that we have for instantaneous gratification. For us, eternity may seem like a far, far off idea. And yet, Eternity for us may be only a few decades, or a few years, or even a few days. We just don't know what day God has marked out for us to leave this earth. And Lent helps us remember. If we are honest with ourselves, we have to admit that we 
probably haven't taken adequate stock of what God expects from us while we are here on this earth. We're too busy about running around doing our daily job. Unfortunately, when it comes to realizing just how little time we have left on this earth, we largely don't think about it until it's too late. Imagine all of the good things that we have left undone. Think about the sins that we have committed and yet have not taken reparation for them. Today's gospel, Jesus emphasizes just how unpredictable life can be. The people that came and told Jesus about the Jews who were killed by Pontius Pilate inside the temple precincts elicited kind of an unusual comment from Jesus. Jesus responded that those Galileans who died in the temple were no greater sinners than anyone else. They were no greater sinners. And yet they died. And the 18 people who were crushed when the power of Siloam and Jerusalem collapsed, they were no greater sinners. That wasn't a punishment for sin that they had committed. In fact, it could have been anybody who was there. Jesus said, do you think that they were any more guilty than everyone else who lived in Jerusalem? He said, by no means. By no means. But I tell you, in both cases, Jesus said, but I tell you, if you do not repent, you will perish as they do. If you do not repent. So Jesus is saying, take stop. Look at yourself. You need to repent because you never know when you might be called to leave this earth. Our Lord is reminding the people that they had better repent of their sins before today. For after death, the chance to repent will have passed us by. We are like that fig tree in the gospel that was destined to be cut down. The landowner said it's worthless. It doesn't have any fruit. Cut it down. But the gardener came along and said, no, 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 wait. Get it this year. Let me dig around it and fertilize it and perhaps it will produce fruit. If not, it's going to cut it down. We are that creature. We are the ones who are given another day, every day of our life, in order to produce good fruit. God has given us another chance to produce good fruit and do the good that He intended for us to do on this earth. And all we have to do is make use of that opportunity. And so, we have to take the long view of time in our life. It's not about turning on the tap and getting hot water instantly. It's not about going to the fast food restaurant and being gratified immediately by having our hand. That's fleeting. That's temporary. That's immediate. That's passing. But I am who is God for all of eternity. His time is eternity. And at some point, we will enter eternity after having left this earth. If you think about it, eternity began at the moment of our conception. When God brought us into being by joining a soul to the, the embryo that was conceived in our mother's womb, time began for us. Eternity began for us. For we are destined to live forever with God. And it is up to us to decide if we love God, if we will obey God, and if we will leave, live with Him for all eternity. Lent calls us to that. Like the fig tree, Lent is an opportunity to fertilize ourselves so that we might produce fruit. And so we are called to repent, to pray, to fast, to give alms, to do new works of charity. When we fast, we break that cycle. When we try to break that cycle of instant gratification. When we pray, we turn our mind and hearts to God to find out what it is He wants us to do. When we give alms and do works of charity, we are bearing that fruit that He intended 
for us to bear on earth by taking care of our brothers and sisters. The best thing that we can do is to make use of the time and the gifts that God has given us so that we might store up in heaven treasure that will not corrode and moths will not destroy. So this time, I urge you to slow down, to repent and go to confession if you haven't already, to fast and to pray, because none of us know the day when God will call us home. And to best make use of the time that God has given us so that we might share.